What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about different ways to select items in your SketchUp model. So before I do that, I do want to thank Edward Mejia, Edward I hope I got your name right, um, for upgrading your pledge on Patreon. Um, Patreon, as most of you know, is a basically a crowdfunding support site where you can support creators that you like. So Edward's one of my supporters, so thank you very much, you're what's making the show possible. If you're interested in uh, supporting the show on Patreon, make sure you check out that link in the notes below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through some different ways to select objects in SketchUp and how to make selections work for you. And uh, the first couple are kind of basic, but we'll get a little bit more advanced, so uh, make sure you stick around. So the first thing, obviously, the easiest way to select an object in your SketchUp model is to single click on it. So you can select faces, you can select lines, you can select objects and groups and components just by single clicking on it. So that's the easiest way to select a, a single object. And you can tell that things are selected because faces get shaded, lines and objects get a blue border around them. Or in this case, this line um, will just turn blue. And so to select a single object, you just single click on it to select multiple objects, you can hold the shift key and click on those different objects. So you can see how as I hold the shift key down and I click on these different objects, they're turning blue. So I can see what objects I have selected by what color they are and if they're shaded in. And you can see how I can have groups and components selected while I have faces selected. And so you can select as many or as few different kinds of objects as you want. Um, and then in addition, when you hold the shift key down, you can see next to your cursor there's a plus and a minus. That's because you can also remove objects from your selection. So you can see I can go in here and I can click on those objects that I had turned blue and I can add and subtract objects as I like by doing this by holding the shift key down. And you'll note that up here in the tray, up in the upper right hand corner in your entity info, this will tell you how many entities you have selected. So if I go through and as I select these, you can see it's adding the number of entities in here. Well, in addition, if you select like entities, like for example, if I just select faces, this will show the area of those faces. So you can see how as I add faces, this is adding to the area of my object. And so I can get the area of multiple different objects by holding my shift key and clicking on these. And then the, the trick is on this, you can't select anything that isn't a different kind of entity. Like you see how as soon as I selected this line, the area no longer shows up. So if I unselect that line or deselect it by holding the shift key and clicking on it, you can see how my area comes back. And you can also do this with edges. So you can add edges into your object. And as you add them into your object by doing a shift click, you can see how this is adding to your length so you can get the overall length of all of these lines. So as you select edges, the, the length object is updating automatically. And then same thing, if I accidentally come in here and select a face, then that's going to go away. But if I hold the shift key again and deselect it, then that length will come back. So you can use that to get measurements of different objects in your model. So you, you can select objects by clicking on them. You can also select objects by dragging a box around them. So what you do is you activate the select tool and you can click and drag. And you can see how when I click and drag, this is adding objects to my selection. And the direction that you click and drag makes a difference. Because if you click and drag from left to right, it's only going to select objects that are completely inside that box. So you can see how if I drag across this face right here and I leave this corner out and this edge out, it's going to select all the, the edges that I drag my box across as well as faces, but anything that I only partially drag across isn't going to get picked up if I drag from left to right. However, if I drag from right to left, you can see how the box I drag is dotted. Well, now that means anything that box touches is going to get added to my selection. So you can see how I can come in here and I can add things to my selection. You can add more objects to your selection dragging right to left. And so one of the tricks about this is you can also hold the shift key and use this. So in the same way, I can hold the shift key and I can drag a box again across objects and I can add or subtract objects based on the box that I drag across. So you can see I'm holding the shift key and this is selecting and deselecting objects as I um, 
as I drag across here. And so sometimes though, you only wanna add things to your selection. And so what you can do is you can hold the control key and you can see how when I hold the control key, there's a little plus sign next to the cursor. That means I am in add to selection mode only. So you can see how all this is doing is it's just adding things to my selection. So if I drag across the same objects again, it's only gonna add those objects in here. It's not gonna subtract them. In the same way, if I hold control and shift, you can see how this turns into a subtract sign next to my cursor. Well, all that's gonna do is that's gonna subtract things from my object. So you can see how I can drag across this multiple times as long as I'm holding control and shift, all it's doing is it's removing things. It's not adding things. So you can use that to get things added into your selection that you want. Like for example, if I was to take this half sphere over here and I'm gonna turn the hidden geometry on, but if I drag across this face, you can see how that only adds, you can see how if I drag across this initially, then it adds all of this selected geometry to my selection. And if I hold the control key and then drag it the other way, like this, it's also gonna add that geometry over there to my selection. So, and then what I could do if I wanted to is I could do something like hold the shift key and now I'm back in plus and minus mode. And so I could drag a box across the whole thing. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna deselect the objects that I had selected and it's gonna select the new objects. So then you could delete this out and create some really cool shapes and objects and that sort of thing by doing that. So once you get an idea of how the pluses and minuses work, then you can do some really cool stuff in here. So the other thing I wanna talk about is double and triple clicking. So you can collect, select a single object by single clicking on it. You can also double click to select all the connected faces. So like for example, if I click on this box, it's gonna select all the connected faces on or all the edges on this face, not the connected faces. So if I double click on a face, you're gonna get your face and you're gonna get all of your edges. So if you double click, you can get a single face and its edges. If you triple click, so if you do one, two, three, it's gonna select all of the connected edges and faces and objects. So you can triple click on an object to select everything in here. And so like for example, right now, this isn't getting picked up when I triple click because they're not connected. But if I was to draw an arc across this face, now these are connected. Now if I triple click, it's gonna select everything because these are touching. So when you triple click, everything that's touching an object gets selected. So, and once you start figuring out how to do things like this and use your selections, then you can really do some interesting stuff. So like for example, if I was to set this in parallel projection so that only this line gets selected, then I could turn this so that it's not hidden geometry. So I could make this line not hidden geometry. I could double click to select everything and then I could shift click to remove my face and then I could use an extension like pipe along path in order to draw like a pipe along this edge. So double click, hold the shift key to deselect this face. Whoops. And then you could use an extension like pipe along path to come in here and create kind of a framework. You could use an extension like joint push pull to make this a little bit smaller. So you can do a lot of different things with this once you get kind of an idea how all this works. And then the other thing you can do is you can also select objects in the outliner. So the outliner, as some of you know, is where you kind of manage your groups and components. So let's say for example, that I have a bunch of different copies of my default model in here those are all gonna show up in my outliner. Well, I can do the same thing over here where I can click on the objects in the outliner and they'll get selected in your model. Well, if you hold shift, so if I select this first object, hold shift, and then click on this last object, then all of these objects in between are gonna get selected. So you can select a lot of different things in the outliner really quickly. Or you can hold the control key to select individual objects or deselect individual objects. So I'm just holding down control 
to deselect these objects. And you can see how as I do that, those are selecting and deselecting in your model as well. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Um, does this give you some ideas for how to use this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.